Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Tuesday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and last night, the final stretch of the season, the last seven games, did not start extremely well for the New York Mets, dropping the first game of a four-game set to the Florida Marlins by a score of eight to four, dwindling their playoff hopes that were already very small down to next to nothing. Ain't over yet, though. Mathematically, still not eliminated, but the the sounds as though the bell is tolling and the, the curtain is calling on this season for the Mets. But I want to talk about last night's game. I want to talk about Steven Matz. I want to talk about Mickey Calloway and uh, do all of that on today's show. Before Sunday's game in, uh, in Cincinnati... Um, and I think this was sort of announced officially on Friday or perhaps Saturday morning. The Mets made the decision to um, swap rotation spots between Steven Matz and Marcus Stroman. And they did that because statistically the numbers show that Matz is a superior pitcher at City Field as opposed to how he performs on the road. And there's a stark, stark difference of over four, uh, four earned runs per game. Um, you know, an ERA of like over five or over six even on the road and an ERA in the twos at home. So it made sense to make that move and make that call. Did not work out for the Mets, unfortunately. Steven Matz was dreadful last night. Um, I, I will say, I, I, I shouldn't really say he was dreadful. I, I have to take into consideration, we have to consider the fact that he was, what the kids like to say, uh, babipped to death. So batting average on balls in play, is uh, Babip and man, did he did, did Matt ever give up some little bleeders to the point where Keith even had to like refer to one of them as a seeing eye single, even though he forgot how to call it that, and Gary had to correct it. Um, but you know, it was it was crazy to watch some of those little dink, little dribblers just kind of find holes. And I mean, the the grand slam he ended up giving up to um, Jorge Alfaro um, to really really nail down this game. Um, uh, it was a six to nothing game at that point. Um, it was it was a cr- that was a crusher, but man, he Matt just should have been out of that inning. I mean, I feel I really felt bad for him, and you know it's it's interesting to to watch how demonstrative he is on the mound, and contrast that to how demonstrative uh, Diaz had been of late when he gave up, especially that home run he gave it to Real Muto in uh, in Philly against the Phillies. I mean, um, where he just threw his arms up on the mound like holy shit, how is this happening to me? Um, this was a, a different reaction from Matt's, where his his reaction was more like, "I cannot believe I just did that." You know, it wasn't a it wasn't a bewilderment like like the the Diaz reaction. It was a, I know how huge this spot is, and I just shit the bed, and it sucks for Matt's. Um, but you know, you could look at that and say he probably shouldn't have been pitching that inning anyway. But at the end of the day, it's not really going to matter, right? I mean, he, he didn't have his best last night. Um, he, as, as I said, said, he got really beat up by balls that really shouldn't have been hits. So, uh, you know, sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles. Unfortunately, for the Mets last night, they couldn't afford to have a game go like this. But, you know, it did, naturally. And at the same time, uh, the Nationals won. So the Nationals really have to um, completely fall apart these next couple of days and, you know, honestly, it doesn't look like the Phillies are capable of hanging with the Nats at this point. So uh, it, it's it's all but over as far as the season goes. But I have to say, um, you know, trailing 6 nothing, Ahmed Rosario comes up last night and talking about, the you know, the season being over. And I'm, I'm on Mets Twitter, of course, and, and watching the, the uh, Stephen Matz is the worst and go away, Stephen Matz, walk back to Long Island, he's terrible, you know, yada, yada. All of the typical Twitter reactions. Um, and someone actually made a funny this morning, which I thought was hysterical. Uh, I don't remember who it was, but I was reading, and it was something like, uh, if if the Mets actually listen to all of the personnel decisions that Mets Twitter makes, the only people on this team right now would be DeGrom, Alonzo, and McNeil. So, and I thought that was hysterical, and it's so true. It's very, it's we talked about this before. The what have you done for me lately? Um, um, you know, kind of culture that comes along with, with the reactions that are Twitter. Um, but, you know, whatever. It, it Matt didn't have his stuff, like I said. But um, what happens in the very next inning? Ahmed Rosario hits a freaking massive clutch Grand Slam home run. Good for Rosario. Awesome spot. 
Mets are down two. They inch to within a few runs. You're feeling sort of like, all right, this is cool. The the, the tide is going to turn in our direction. And now i got to talk about Mickey Calloway. Because just as we had that, that, that positive feeling, Mickey Calloway decides to start the seventh inning with um, Walker Lockett on the mound. And interesting to look at this uh, situation because Walker Lockett is the guy who will very likely be the fifth starter if the Mets let Steven Matz walk or if they were to trade Noah Syndergaard or, um, you know, if, if uh, sorry, if they let um, Zach Wheeler walk or if they were to trade Noah Syndergaard or Steven Matz. Um, the, 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 the contrast between the pitchers that we just talked about and Walker Lockett is fairly significant, and the seventh inning should be the evidence that you need to, to remind yourself of that. Um, Walker, Walker Lockett's in this game because he doesn't walk anybody, and he walks the first batter that he faces, because of course he does. Um, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a, a back against the wall situation. Lockett doesn't do his job. Mickey goes out to get him. I'm, I'm, I'll get to Mickey in a second. Brings in Brad Brock, who does his job. Um, retires. There was nobody out. Uh, bases end up being loaded. Uh, he gets a, a, a soft or a shallow fly ball to right. He gets a, gets a strikeout, a, sh- a fly ball to right. And then he gets a ground ball to first base. And the ball was hit wide enough at first that Brock had to cover. And he was a half a step off. A half a step late getting to first base. And give credit to the, the, the base runner from the Marlins. I can't think of his name, but um, he really busted it out of the box. And he made a play at first where he beat the he beat the play to first base. He was safe. And it allowed two runs to score. Um, I can argue till I'm blue in the face that the replay system is completely broken and there's no way in hell that that second run should be allowed to score there because the the it's like time has been called you know it's it's it, it someone also someone also on twitter made the suggestion that allowing that second run to score would be the same thing as saying well while uh while the umpires deliberate a home run uh the guy can keep running the bases and score if he wants and it's like it just it just doesn't you know whatever it doesn't matter um the runner's safe two runs come in that ends up being um uh, kind of crushing any momentum the Mets had built previously with Rosario's Grand Slam. Losing 8-4 to four was the final. You know, it sucked. Um, I, I can't get on Brad Brock. I, re- I really can't. I mean, he was a half a step off that, that the batter for the Marlins busted his ass down the line. And, uh, you know, naturally Twitter cre- crazy reactions. Um, and I, I, I was... I was kind of bummed last night. I mean, the game notwithstanding, uh, just the way that people react to um, to the players, you know, not being perfect, it, it's really obnoxious. It really is. It makes it embarrassing for me to be a Mets fan, and I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. But you know, to to hear and hear and read about the way people talk about these players um, that are that are on our team, you know, that we're supposed to be cheering for and rooting for, uh, it's it's disgusting to me. As far as I'm concerned, um, you don't turn your back on your players. You just don't. And I've, I've had this conversation about Noah Syndergaard already this year. And last night I had to have it about Mats. And I even had to have it about Brock. And I, the comment I made about Brad Brock was, this dude is a friggin' huge Mets fan. Like he's, He grew up a Mets fan. He went to the 2015 World Series. He bought tickets to the World Series. He wore a Matt Harvey jersey to the World Series. <laughs> He was playing for another team at the time. The dude is a Mets fan. Don't you think he's crushed sitting there realizing that because of what he just did, because of that half step that he was off, he ruined the, the chances for the season? You know, and and look, <laughs> nobody can point the finger at him and say this is all Brad Brock's fault, right? We can go back to a dozen-plus opportunities the team squandered this season. But regardless... You guys got to stop freaking out over every little play and demanding immediate reaction. Like this is not, this is not the 1700s. We don't have a guillotine. Thank God, because there'd be no one left on the team with a head. Anyway, speaking of people that are headless or at least mindless, Mickey Calloway. Um, <laughs> that, that was a good segue. I didn't even think I was going to do that one. Mickey Calloway last night. Um, 
you know, for every time I think that Mickey's done enough to to warrant a, a return next year, and I'm not convinced that he's not going to be back, but every time I feel like he's made progress or, you know, I forget about how bad he is in-game, uh, he goes and does something like he does last night. Excuse me. The first thing he does is he leaves Steven Matson one inning too long. And look, that's excusable because I think we all realized that last night both Wilson and Lugo were not available, um, as evidenced by who came out of the bullpen in the seventh inning. But you're at this point in the season where you, you have to win every game. Um, I, I don't know how Walker Lockett is the best option out of the bullpen. I, I really don't. Um, honestly, I don't know how Walker Lockett or Chris Flexen or Chris Mazza or any of these bullpen arms are, are going to get any uh, time down the stretch if the Mets intend to uh, to compete for a wild card spot, which you know they're they're still sort of doing. Um, they, these these guys are not winners. These are bad pitchers. They need to be in mop up games at best, um, and 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 not in any games if not because they're not major league caliber pitchers. They're really not. They're just not that good. And the fact that Mickey Calloway goes to Walker Lockett. The, the moment after the momentum shifts in the Mets' favor, you don't want to go out and get a, a lockdown inning to keep the momentum going. And I, yes, I know, that's his job. You know, Lockett has to get those three those three outs. He doesn't. He fails. He does well. We don't criticize Mickey Calloway. That's the job. Tough shit. Um, you know, you're going to get credit for very little, and you're going to get blamed for a lot. And that's the way it goes as a manager in the majors. But, dude, he, he's just got no feel whatsoever for the game, for the team, for the players, for the moves that he's not making or not making. And, honestly, it's 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 the reason why he probably won't be back next year. I, I'm sorry. He's just – he has cost this team too many games. And I can't blame him on last night. You know, I can't blame last night on him, rather. It's not all his fault. But, you know, whatever. You know, it, it – I've said it before, I'll say it again. He has to put his players in position to win, in the best position to win. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that often enough. So, um, so Mets drop down to uh, 81 and 75 on the season, six games over 500. Uh, as I said, they, they cannot finish under 500. I said that yesterday. But I, I, I don't want to even have that mindset continuing with the next six games. I want the Mets to go and get 84, 85 wins. So let's win some games here, starting tonight with Noah Syndergaard on the mound. Interesting to see as catcher gate continues who he's throwing to, if it's if it's Ramos or Nito. I think Rene Rivera had his shot last week, and um, he really blew it. Yeah, so uh, I don't think it'll be Rene Rivera behind the plate. Um, I, I suspect we'll see Tomas Nito. And um, we'll see what happens tonight. I'll be back tomorrow to talk about it. Until then, thank you for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.